In this video, I'm going to take you through some of the top suburbs in the Clackamas County area of Portland. All that starts right now. Uh, now we are in uh, Milwaukee, Oregon. Milwaukee spelled with an I-E, not two E's. That's uh, for all you people that are outside of this area, common mistake. Milwaukee's in Clackamas County, although Google says that uh, part of the area extends a little bit into Multnomah County. If it does, it's not by much. Milwaukee is about five, six, seven minutes from where we're standing south of Portland. So it's very close to Portland. I'm at Bay Park right now. You can take a look around. This is the Willamette River. So right there, uh, sitting right on the Willamette River, uh, which is in downtown Milwaukee. Now, um, what makes Milwaukee so desirable? And full disclosure here, I was born and raised in this area, so there might be a little bit of bias, but as somebody that lived here and was born here for so long, I think I can pretty honestly say that this is one of the best suburbs and was growing up one of the best suburbs of Portland. It's recently become very desirable in the last few years. In fact, uh, one of the two zip codes in Milwaukee, 97222, has been one of the hottest zip codes in the Portland metro area in the past few years. And here's why. The first thing, close proximity. You are very close to Portland. So if you're working in Portland or you just want to be close to Portland because of the things to do or the nightlife or whatever it is that takes you to Portland. Uh, again, you're about five minutes south of Portland. Some places in Milwaukee are gonna be 10 or 15 minutes, usually no more than that though. So you are very close to Portland, but the real big advantage here is you're not actually paying Portland prices. Homes here are probably about 10 to 20% less than if you just go uh, five minutes north of here into Portland. So a lot of people have found that they can buy a home here a lot less um, than what they might pay in say um, just five minutes north of here in like a downtown Portland or a Portland property. So that's drawn a lot of people uh, to Milwaukee. You've got some pretty good shopping around here, good schools. Um, you've got your uh, standard uh, Safeway, Albertsons. Some of your better shopping will actually be right next door in Clackamas. You've got the Clackamas Town Center, Clackamas Promenade. Uh, there is a Trader Joe's now, um, which was not here when I was growing up. I know uh, there's not a Trader Joe's where I currently live, and I know a lot of people are always asking about Trader Joe's. So um, you've got all your grocery stores, you've got the mall, and the Clackamas Town Center, uh, if you're not from this area, is one of the largest malls uh, in the area. So that's just a few minutes away from you. Um, so good schools, good, um, good shopping. Um, it's a pretty quiet area. It's got a downtown, and I'll take you through that. Uh, that downtown is, and kind of from what you're going to see, is, is usually pretty quiet. It is up and coming um, because it's a desirable area and a lot of people are wanting to move here. Businesses are being drawn here as well. So you've got some new businesses, new restaurants. Uh, you have food carts here now, which people uh, typically uh, tend to be excited by. So that's something that's a little bit newer to Milwaukee. So it's close proximity. It's more affordable housing. Uh, low crime, good schools, quiet, nice, and you've got stuff like this. And by the way, across the river, what you're looking at is right on the border of about uh, somewhere around Lake Oswego uh, and Portland is what you're looking at right across the river there. Um, homes across the river there are going to be uh, at least twice the value, maybe three times the value and more. All right, so let's talk about homes and home values in Milwaukee. I am uh, sitting here actually in uh, Cherrigino Farms. This is a new subdivision. And as the name implies, it actually used to be a farm. It was a farm here uh, when I was growing up. I think it was some sort of berry farm, um, raspberries or some, something like that. There's people out here always picking berries. So the houses here in Milwaukee, a lot of what you have in, the, in Milwaukee and what makes it affordable, you have a lot of mid-century ranches, three bed, two bath, 1,200 square feet, a lot of that kind of stuff. 
a lot of these homes have been updated, you know, mostly like, you know, kitchen updates, you know, the updates that people care about the most first. Um, but that's a lot of what you're going to see in Milwaukee. There is some new construction though, um, like you're seeing right here in Cherigino Farms, um, where you can find some four bed houses. Five beds are a little bit tougher to find. A lot of what you're gonna see in Milwaukee is like three bed, two bath, like I said, 1200 square feet. And those prices typically range in like the high 400s, uh, as this is being filmed right now, it changes uh, so quickly these days, but high 480s um, to low 500s. Milwaukee, if you look at Milwaukee, if you look it up on Google, it's gonna be confusing for you. Milwaukee is actually made up of two zip codes, 97222 and 97267. Now the post office, and technically 97267 is supposed to be Portland. There's nobody that lives in the area though that, that considers it Portland, nor is their address Portland. Um, and there's one caveat, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second. So if you look at 97267 on a map, uh, it's right there with Milwaukee. Of course, it's part of Milwaukee. If you look at any business uh, in that zip code, you're gonna see that they list their address as a Milwaukee address. Um, some people might consider there's a, a, an unincorporated area, it's called Oak Grove. Some people might consider themselves as living in Oak Grove, but for the most part, anybody that lives in 97267 considers themselves living in Milwaukee, and, and that area is, is Milwaukee. Um, the exception may be when people list their home for sale, I have seen people list their address as Portland, whereas in the past it was listed as Milwaukee. I think some people think that maybe they're going to get a little bit more money for their home if it's listed as Portland instead of Milwaukee. Uh, the data doesn't necessarily bear that out. Um, again, 97267, the average is a little bit higher. Um, that's probably the low 500s, whereas 97222 is high 400s. The difference there being, though, if you look at 97267 on a map, that part of Milwaukee uh, includes uh, bordering along the Willamette River. And there's a lot of houses along the Willamette River, and there's a lot of expensive houses. In fact, you're probably not going to find much under seven figures uh, on the Willamette River right there. There might be a few like teardowns um, that you're just you're just paying for the lot that uh, that might be in the six figures. But most of those really expensive homes are going to be most likely what's driving up that, that average in 97267 being a little bit higher than 97222. So if you're looking to be in Milwaukee, you're gonna wanna look at both of those zip codes. Uh, and a little extra added bonus, if you're outside of the area, you might not look at this either, but Gladstone. Gladstone is right next to Milwaukee uh, and Clackamas. It's a little tiny area. I think the population is like five, six, seven thousand people. But if you're looking to be in this area, Gladstone is uh, probably something that you want to include in your search as well, because homes are very similar there, um, about the same price. It's, it's connected to Milwaukee. So um, I know that can be confusing, but that's part of what we are here for. Uh, if you're looking for a home in this area and you're trying to figure out, you know, where exactly is the address? Am I in Clackamas County? Am I in Multnomah County? What are property taxes going to look like? Because if you're coming from outside of the state, you might not be used to property taxes being as high as they are here in Oregon. Um, so that's part of what we'll be here for you, uh, the home team brokers. Well, that's part of what we'll be here to guide you through. Uh, so that's what you're looking at for homes in Milwaukee. High 400s, low 500s for those mid-century, three-bedroom, two-bathroom. But we do also have a little bit of new construction. You can find some four- and five-bed bath stuff as well. All right, everyone, so here we are in Oregon City. Oregon City is just about 20, 25 minutes uh, south, southeast of Portland, maybe 30, 40 minutes, uh, depending on where you're coming from uh, in Oregon City. Oregon City uh, is going to be one of the largest uh, by land area uh, suburbs on our list. Uh, what you're seeing right here is downtown Oregon City. And in the back, you can't really see it that well, but uh, uh, you've got Willamette Falls. Willamette Falls is uh, one of the largest waterfalls by 
um, land uh, by volume, by water volume in the country, in the world actually. Um, not the tallest, that would probably go to, in the state of Oregon, that would go to Multnomah County. Um, so Oregon City is, uh, it's probably going to be the most rural area uh, from uh, our entire list here. If you look at Oregon City on a map, and you'll want to uh, Google search the zip code 97045 rather than the actual name. If you Google search uh, maps for Oregon City, it's not going to give you the full radius. If you search 97045, then you'll just see how big Oregon City is, um, and, and it's massive. So Oregon City is um, made up of uh, a lot of farms, uh, pastures, you're gonna have um, wedding venues, a uh, fair amount of golf courses out here, um, nurseries. All right, so stepping outside of the elevator, I'll see if I can give you a little bit better view of Willamette Falls. On the other side over there, that is West Lynn. And if you keep going uh, further uh, up the river uh, south, uh, that's gonna take you to Canby. Now, all of this industrial stuff, A lot of that stuff um, is currently abandoned and uh, there's something called the Willamette Falls Legacy Project that I mentioned. That's what, uh, that's what uh, some developers have been working on to restore that area, remove all of this industrial um, commercial uh, buildings and replace it with a river walk uh, as well as uh, I believe they want to put in some condos and some shops. Uh, so, you know, something to really complement the waterfall a little bit better than uh, all this industrial stuff that uh, currently nobody is using. All right, so uh, let's take a look around Oregon City. I'll kind of take you through, like I said, it's very rural here, um, lots of farms, but uh, I'll take you through the area so you can see a little bit better. And then real quick, what you're seeing right here is the entryway to the Oregon City Municipal Elevator, and there it is again in the background. That's the elevator that you see at the very beginning of this video. So this is the downtown right here. Um, Oregon City does have a pretty lively downtown. Uh, a lot of restaurants, a lot of things going on down here. Um, the farmer's market is actually down here as well too. So this is an area that draws a lot of people um, for a lot of different reasons. The schools in Oregon City are also great. Uh, there's one high school. Uh, it's one of the larger high schools in the area. Uh, their sports are also very competitive. Uh, the shopping in Oregon City overall is pretty good. There's a Fred Meyer, Safeway, Albertsons. Uh, a lot of people in Oregon City do uh, tend to find themselves going to like Milwaukee or the Clackamas Happy Valley area uh, for like uh, the Clackamas Town Center uh, and for Costco as well. But all in all, the shopping is pretty good uh, in Oregon City. All right, so let's talk about the housing in Oregon City. Uh, average homes uh, are close to 600, about uh, high 500s. Um, they're up about 20% uh, in the past year, which is pretty average uh, for the suburbs around Portland. Oregon City does have a pretty wide range of homes. Uh, you can find older homes, uh, ranches, one levels. Uh, there's new construction. There's a lot of large homes too, especially uh, large homes. If you want something that's on a bigger lot, maybe a half acre or an acre. Uh, Oregon City is probably one of the top places uh, around Portland to find a larger home on a larger lot like that. Uh, but all in all, you've got a pretty wide variety of uh, homes in Oregon City. All right, so now we are in Lake Oswego. Lake Oswego is in Clackamas County. There's about 40,000 people here. We're approximately maybe eight miles, eight to 10 minutes south of Portland. Now this is on the west side of the Willamette River. Some of the other towns like Oregon City, uh, Milwaukee, um, they're on the east side, the other side of the Willamette River. So now we're on the west side of the Willamette River here in Lake Oswego. As the name implies, uh, there is a lake here and most of the city is sort of encompassing the lake uh, here in Lake Oswego. Uh, this is one of the more desirable spots um, really in all of Oregon. In fact, this place has been named one of the top spots to live, not just in Portland, but in Oregon as in general. They have some of the top rated schools. Um, really uh, maybe the top rated schools, definitely at the top of the list. They have some of the best sports and athletics. So if you have kids that are really competitive, 
um, or just maybe want to be on a winning team, maybe you don't care about playing time too much, uh, the schools here um, with their athletics are second to none, probably some, probably the best in the state. Uh, and uh, consequently, homes here are very, very expensive. This is going to be the most expensive place on our list. And we're talking two to three times more expensive than some of the other towns on our list. Lake Oswego uh, has a lot of great shops, although they don't have a lot of great, um, they don't have a lot of like big, you know, big box, big brand names, um, more like smaller boutique shops. You have to go next door to like a Tualatin or to um, a Clackamas if you want to find your bigger um, shopping stores. Uh, you do have um, some specialty grocery stores like a Zupans, for example. Um, a lot of great restaurants. Um, some of the better restaurants around Portland have actually recently opened up locations here in Lake Oswego. Uh, you got a country club, Lake Oswego Country Club. Don't ask me how much that costs. You have a lot of great parks here too, a lot of big parks. Now when I say parks, uh, sometimes people think about grass and uh, a play structure for kids, maybe a basketball court or something like that. Parks here in Oregon, and especially our really nice parks, are, are more like forests. They're hundreds of acres, they have trails that would take you miles and, and day, days and days to walk or hike. Um, Tryon Creek Park, for example, um, is a big part of Lake Oswego. Um, not sure exactly how big it is. When you look at it on a map, it's huge. Um, and like I said, it would take you days to navigate through. So that's what you're kind of looking at with Lake Oswego. Um, expensive homes, large homes. They do have kind of, you. anybody could live here. There are some more expensive um, homes, but maybe some inexpensive condos um, or apartments. So I don't think it's with um, out of reach for anybody to, to live here if you wanted to live here. But if you want to be a homeowner, it is out of reach uh, for most people. But uh, if it is for you, if you're looking for top schools, a large home, a beautiful area. I mean, this is as nice of an area as anywhere else. Um, probably in the state and that is one one reason why this is probably named as one of the top places to live in the state uh, let me let me show you a little bit more of the plaza here this is also where uh, the farmers market takes place which is um, springtime summertime it runs for maybe four or five months uh, throughout the year um, and it's pretty big too so that's a big attraction there are some other events that take place throughout the year that tree that tree that you see back there is where they do the Christmas tree um, lighting every year and I'm gonna take you over here to show you a little bit of the lake All right, let's go take a look at the rest of the city. So this starts at uh, Millennium Plaza here where we're just walking around. This is kind of like the main area. Uh, this is where a lot of people are coming to eat, shop. Uh, there are also some condos uh, in here as well, but this is kind of more of what I was referring to when I said there's a lot more boutique shopping. Again, there's not a whole lot of like big box stores, big brand names. A lot, a lot of people coming here more for the kind of the boutique shops. In the area, it does get to quite a bit of traffic, but it's not super congested. It can get busy at times, and uh, you start to see traffic backing up, but it's not super congested here. Um, and what you're seeing right here is kind of the western part of the lake. It's really the only uh, part of the lake where you have a kind of a commercial businesses. Um, other than that, anything else around the lake is going to be residential. And of course, those are gonna be your most expensive houses. Lake Oswego doesn't have a ton of new construction. It is very well developed, so there's just not a, a ton of uh, lots or uh, undeveloped land in this area. So most of what you have is, are, are gonna be older homes, uh, but a lot of those homes have been renovated and updated uh, just kind of due to the money in this area. So even some of the old, older homes, just pretty much everything is gonna be updated um, that's in Lake Oswego because you have so much money coming to this area. Now you can find homes uh, in the 700s, maybe a few homes. 
Other than that, uh, it probably goes without saying, everything that's going to be on the lake is going to be the multiple uh, seven figures. So 700 is probably at the very bottom, um, all the way up to the multiple seven figures, and then kind of everything in between. So again, you won't find much new construction, but pretty much everything is pretty updated in Lake Oswego, just because, uh, like I said, all the money coming to this area, whenever you find a property that uh, maybe isn't in great shape, it doesn't take long for like a flipper or an investor to come in and, uh, and update that property. All right, so now here we are in Clackamas uh, Happy Valley. Uh, the Clackamas Happy Valley area is in Clackamas County, as you might have guessed. We're about uh, 15 at the closest, 30 minutes south, southeast of Portland. This will be um, our easternmost suburb that's on our list. And that's important to note because uh, that puts us closest to Mount Hood. So if you're a mountain person, uh, hiking, climbing, snowboarding, skiing, any of that stuff, this area will definitely be at the top of your list. Uh, if you compare this to like um, somewhere on the west side of Portland, like a Beaverton, as it stands right now here in Happy Valley, uh, we're maybe hour and a half away from uh, Mount Hood. If you're on the west side of Portland, that's going to tack at least an hour onto your trip uh, both ways. So definitely a good spot for uh, people that uh, want to travel to Mount Hood frequently. Um, so Happy Valley is like the new part of Clackamas. Uh, this is all new development and this is a uh, a new subdivision that I'm walking through here just off of Sunnyside. Happy Valley is developed um, eastward towards Mount Hood um, up and down one road called Sunnyside. Uh, because there's only kind of one main road in here it does tend to get kind of congested here. Maybe one small downside um, of Happy Valley. Now when I think of Happy Valley I think of quintessential suburbs. So if you were to look up suburbs in the dictionary or do a Google search, Google image search for suburbs, what you would see is basically what Happy Valley looks like. Well, like this. Um, a lot of these homes too are unoccupied and uh, Oregon being a migratory state, there's more people that move here rather than moving out of here. So the real estate market is very, very competitive. Uh, so there are a lot of new homes here and a lot of homes that will be built here in the coming years. They'll be developing this area for a long time. Shopping here is pretty good. Um, there's a lot of shopping that's been developed here as well. Um, your grocery shopping, you've got Fred Meyer, you've got New Seasons, you've got a couple strip malls that they're building in here. You do have Clackamas Town Center, which is one of the a few, um, the handful of malls uh, that you have in the Portland metro area. Although Clackamas, is, uh, Clackamas Town Center is um, in the Clackamas kind of part of Happy Valley, uh, which is closer to 205, not up uh, Sunnyside. So a lot of the homes that they're building here um, are larger homes, a lot of four bedroom and five bedroom homes. So a lot of families moving here. Uh, you've got two high schools. You've got Clackamas High School, which is a newer high school uh, that serves the entire area. And then you've got a brand new high school that's going to serve the Happy Valley area. Um, Clackamas High School is a great school. I'm sure the new one will be as well, um, as well as the middle schools and the primary schools here. So you've got great schools here just like the other suburbs uh, along uh, in Portland uh, that are on our list, you've got great parks as well. So with great schools, uh, good parks, um, good shopping, uh, this is a very highly desirable area for people. So there's a lot of people that are moving here and a lot of people that plan to move here again um, as this area continues to be developed out. Probably one of the more um, developed areas of Portland right now, Happy Valley is and will continue to be so in the coming years. Um, as far as home prices go, you're looking at like mid to maybe high 600s. Um, so sort of on par with like a Wilsonville. Uh, so you're gonna be a little bit more expensive than a Milwaukee or an Oregon City, but you're gonna be less expensive uh, than a Lake Oswego or a West Lynn. Your home prices are gonna be about mid 600s to high 600s. Um, which puts you kind of on par with Wilsonville, which is on our list. A little bit more expensive than a Milwaukee or an Oregon City, but uh, going to be less expensive than a Lake Oswego or a West Lynn. I'll show you a little bit more around the town. All right, so here we got uh, the new Happy Valley uh, High School. Um, beautiful new high school. Uh, a lot prettier than uh, 
the schools when I was growing up for sure. Uh, next right here we're going to see, uh, this is what some of the de new development uh, shopping looks like up Sunnyside. So right here what you're seeing is about maybe 10 or 15 minutes from I-205 and then from 205 it's about another 15 minutes to Portland. So you're going to find uh, a couple strip malls like this that are going to have a lot of new shopping in it uh, up Sunnyside. Uh, again, further out east in the Happy Valley area. And then kind of just past the shopping center, uh, this is a newer subdivision. This is not the same one that I was walking through earlier. Uh, this is Scatters Mountain. This is maybe just about two miles away. There's a couple hundred homes in here. At least there might be uh, maybe even 300 homes in here. I'm not sure actually, but uh, there's quite a few homes in here and they're still building in here and they're gonna be building in here for a while. So this is kind of gives you an idea of uh, what Happy Valley looks like. Uh, again, just total suburbia. All right, so here we are in Wilsonville. Wilsonville is about 25, 30 minutes south of Portland. Uh, and it's a good solid 25, 30 minutes. I've heard people say that it's less, like 20 minutes or even less. Yeah, with traffic, it's definitely 25 to 30 minutes. Uh, currently in Villebois, specifically uh, Sophia Park. Wilsonville uh, originally is a, a farming community. It's now home to about 26,000 people. This part of Wilsonville that we're in, Villebois, is a newer community. Uh, it's filled with homes, townhomes, condos. Um, it's got about 160 acres of parks. Um, it's got some shops, markets. Um, it's got a community center, it's got a pool really got everything that you could want and sort of quintessential I think Villebois really kind of personifies Wilsonville um, which is to say that Wilsonville is um, mostly newer uh, a lot of new stuff here um, a lot of new homes new shops and kind of what you see right there um, is what you're gonna see uh, in most of Wilsonville, kind of just houses and houses and parks and parks for days and days. So Wilsonville is a really desirable area because uh, it's nice, it's clean, uh, they've got a lot of great schools. Shopping here is pretty good. You've got a Costco, you've got a Fred Meyers, um, uh, some pretty good uh, little shopping strip malls around here. And uh, Wilsonville has kind of a, a really um, suburban but condensed feel to it. Now, if you look at Wilsonville on a map, it's going to be the southernmost uh, suburb on our list. And uh, looking at it from a map, it might kind of look like it's the most rural. And given that it's originally a farming community, it kind of seems um, there are there's definitely some rural parts to it. But um, the the more populous areas, the areas where all the houses are, kind of looks like. Uh, what you see there, um, houses on top of houses on top of houses. So it is really kind of condensed here. It's not quite as spread out. It doesn't really kind of have that rural feel to it. I think at least for most of the people living here, maybe compared to like an Oregon City or even a West Lynn, uh, if you're living in Oregon City or West Lynn, oftentimes you're driving by undeveloped areas and farms and pastures. So it kind of gives you a little bit more of a country feel. Um, Wilsonville is a little bit more condensed, but um, it is surrounded by farms and undeveloped area. You are probably closest here to wine country. So if you want to be close to wine country, this is definitely a great spot for you. You've got a lot of really great farm to table here. Um, you've got some great restaurants, some great places to eat. Probably not the biggest selection of restaurants, but a lot of great food and a lot of great drinks. Uh, schools here are top rated. So having uh, a newer area with a lot of new homes, and a lot of these homes are four and five bedroom, so attracting a lot of families. So having kind of a newer area that's really well developed, uh, that has great schools, uh, makes this area highly desirable. And when I say really well developed, uh, it's really developed with uh, the outdoor Oregonian in mind. There's just no shortage of places to walk and parks that you see just like this. Uh, housing here is going to be a little bit more expensive, kind of in the middle. Um, it's gonna be more expensive than a Milwaukee or an Oregon City, uh, but it's not gonna be quite as expensive as a West Lynn or a Lake Oswego. So it's kind of right there in the middle, maybe more comparable to like a Clackamas um, Happy Valley. 
typically when you're this far away from Portland, 30 minutes away from Portland, um, homes do tend to be a little less expensive. Um, but in this case, because all of your homes are so new, that's kind of what drives the price up a little bit. Average homes here for a detached home is probably gonna be somewhere in the mid to the high 600s. So Wilsonville is really gonna be kind of like quintessential suburbia, kind of similar to Happy Valley. And uh, you're not too far from Portland if you do uh, either commute to Portland or just wanna be close enough to go do Portland stuff, like go to a Blazer game kind of right on the edge being about 25 30 minutes um, people don't tend to commute a whole lot more than that some people commute 45 minutes to an hour but kind of being on that edge if you go south of Wilsonville which uh, is going to be uh, Woodburn that's kind of like the cutoff for housing prices as far as um, what's uh, as far as cost goes homes do tend to be less expensive uh, in uh, south of Wilsonville one of the downsides probably about Wilsonville is uh, I-5 runs directly through Wilsonville. Uh, and if you are from Washington or California, um, especially California, a lot of people probably watching this are, um, you know that uh, I-5 runs all the way through California, through Oregon and through Washington. So it's the biggest highway in the state. So obviously it gets a lot of traffic. And with that traffic comes congestion. A lot of people either commuting um, from Portland down this way or just traveling, traveling to the Willamette Valley, uh, traveling to Bend, traveling to central uh, southern Oregon coast. So uh, I-5 does tend to get congested around Wilsonville. It's probably one of the bigger downsides. But then again, you're close to the highway too. So if, so if you like being close to the highway, that's gonna be, um, that's gonna be a benefit for you. All in all, if, uh, if you want uh, something newer, if you wanna be in a place that has a lot of parks, um, a place that uh, has more inventory of larger homes if you're looking for a four or five bed home with great schools and you don't need to be too close to Portland, um, you're not uh, commuting too much or don't mind traffic too much and that congestion, Wilsonville is gonna be a great spot for you. It's beautiful here as you can kind of see from this video and that's what makes it so desirable here. All right, so here we are in Old Town which is uh, the historic neighborhood of Willamette, which is in West Lynn. West Lynn is about uh, 20 minutes uh, south of Portland. Uh, we're just southeast of Lake Oswego and uh, just west on the other side of the bridge uh, from Oregon City. There's about 26,000 people uh, that live here. Uh, full disclosure, I'm one of those people, so prepare for some bias. Uh, so we are, uh, so the old town here that we're in, this is the downtown. The downtown here is, uh, is, is kind of small. It's on the smaller side. It's not one of the bigger downtowns, but it's typically pretty busy. There's a fair amount of businesses, uh, shops, and restaurants that draw people down here. I think it does have probably one of the better downtowns. Um, Lake Oswego is definitely going to be the busiest. Uh, and a Milwaukee might be a little bit bigger uh, than a West Lynn, but uh, Milwaukee is usually a little bit quieter. And compared to especially like a Happy Valley and a Wilsonville, they don't really have big downtowns or, or downtowns that are very lively. Um, typically this downtown is pretty lively. There's usually stuff going on. Um, a lot of events over uh, the course of the year, mostly in the summertime. Um, notably the farmer's market is down here uh, as well uh, every Wednesday. So got a great little downtown here in West Lynn. Uh, the schools here are top rated, uh, elementary, uh, primary, uh, middle school and high school. There's one high school here, which is Westland High School. It is one of the top high schools in the state. Uh, they also have great athletics too. So if you've got kids that are in sports, they have very competitive athletics, especially recently too. Uh, their basketball team um, has done very well. They won four state championships uh, back to back to back uh, recently. Uh, pr probably due in part, large part to uh, Peyton Pritchard, uh, who then went on to play for the Oregon Ducks and now plays for the Boston Celtics. And they currently have a guard that's one of the top guards uh, in, in the country. We're kind of a little bit more of a, a I feel like we lean a little bit more towards a, a basketball town given that the Portland Trailblazers are one of our, um, our biggest uh, sports, professional sports teams here around the Portland area. So we kind of skew towards basketball, of course, football, baseball, uh, soccer, you know, all the other big sports as well too. But uh, people sort of skew a little bit more towards basketball. So great athletics here um, in West Lynn. Great parks too as well. You have Willamette Park, which is uh, just down the way. Um, that's where the nearest boat ramp's gonna be for a lot of people. Um, a lot of open fields up there, soccer, baseball, playground for the kids. 
Uh, Fields Bridge Park is just down the way, a little bit of a smaller park, but there's a community farming plot right there, which is pretty cool. And then up the river, um, you've got Mary S. Young Park, which is a really big park, a lot of wooded areas, trails, um, open leash or off leash dog park, take the dogs down to uh, the river. So that's a great park as well. Um, the shopping here, a lot of people are shopping uh, at Safeway. Uh, we do have kind of an upscale um, market as well, market of choice. Uh, there's a Walmart, but uh, aside from that, um, the shopping leads a little bit to be desired. You're probably going to go to Wilsonville for Costco or Happy Valley Clackamas. There's a Costco there as well, about the same distance from here. Uh, we do have a new par uh, hardware store, Park Rose Hardware. Before people were going to uh, like Home Depot, or um, which is in Oregon City, or Lowe's, which is in Milwaukee. So enough here to get by and stay home, but the shopping does leave a little bit to be uh, desired. All right, how about the real estate here, the homes here? Um, you don't have very many new homes here, like a Happy Valley or a, a Wilsonville. Uh, a lot of the homes here were developed in the 90s. The homes here are larger though, so if you're looking for like a four bed or a five bed, you're more likely to find it here than maybe some of the other towns on our list, especially if you're looking for a large home. A lot of those newer homes in like uh, Happy Valley and um, Wilsonville, those are typically like, you'll find some three beds, some five beds, mostly four beds, 2,500 to 3,500 square feet, um, which is kind of like the typical new construction. Whereas uh, like a Lake Oswego or a West Lynn, you are gonna find homes um, that are in the four or 5,000 square foot range. So if you are looking uh, for more space, not just more bedrooms. Uh, West Lynn is probably going to be at the top of your list, uh, as well as Lake Oswego. And then Oregon City does have some large homes as well, especially if you're looking for something on acreage. Uh, Oregon City has a lot of homes that are on like a half acre to an acre uh, that are four, five thousand, six thousand square foot homes. So the real estate market is really competitive here. Um, there's not a ton of homes on the market and they do move very quickly, having top schools, great neighborhoods, um, lots of parks, very low crime. It's one of the lowest crime um, places in the state. Uh, makes um, housing very desirable here. So houses don't tend to sit on the market for very long, but um, you can definitely find something. And, and there are some smaller houses here as well. There's townhouses um, here too, not just a bunch of big houses. So we do have a variety, but definitely if you're looking for a larger house um, or for more space or more bedrooms, this is probably gonna be uh, one of the top suburbs on your list. All right, well, I hope that helps. Um, there's a lot of great areas around here, and if I didn't name any, you know, this is just my personal opinion. There's a lot of great towns um, around the suburbs that I've named here. If you have any questions, if you're thinking about buying or selling really anywhere in the Portland metro area, you can give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or even click the link uh, below in the description. No matter how you get in touch, we've got your back when it comes to moving in the Portland area. Take care, everyone.